Hey, what's going on guys? Tanmay for Telusco Learnings and in this video tutorial, we are going to be taking a practical approach and understand the if else control statements in JavaScript. So in the previous video, we saw what are control statements and we saw the different types of control statements and we took a theoretical approach. So if you have missed that video, you can check it out in this playlist. But in this tutorial, we are going to be seeing three different programs based on if else control statements. So let's just quickly get into the topic and open up your Visual Studio code or any text editor that you're using. And as you can see, I've already opened up mine and I also have opened up the Chrome browser and we are live. So anything that I change over here is immediately visible in the output. So that's that live server plugin that is active. And as you can see on the screen, these are the three different questions that we are going to be writing program for. So let me just read it out quickly. So the first question is find whether a number is even or odd. Second is find if a number is positive, negative or zero. And the third one is find if a number is positive and even. So these are three different variants of if else control statements and we'll see the different types. So let's start off with the first one that is find whether a number is even or odd. Okay, so as you can see on this line, I have created a variable where x equals to six. Now for simplicity purpose, I'm not taking values from user because we still have to understand what is DOM manipulations and how to take values from text box. We still haven't reached that level. So as of now, I'm just hard coding the values that is I'm directly giving values in the code. So I have a variable X who's storing a value of six over here, as you can see. And now we're going to do if else control statements. So this if else control statements helps us determine a particular condition. So what is the condition in question number one? We have to find out whether the number is even or odd. So this is how the syntax goes. You have to write if that's the syntax. So that's the keyword and then opening and closing round brackets. And inside that you have to say X mod two equal equal to zero. Then opening and closing curly braces. So this is that if block and I'll explain to you what this condition is. So what we're doing is we're checking whether the modulus operation performed with the variable X is giving us a result of zero. Now we know that even numbers when divided by two will always give us the result of zero, right? That is the remainder is going to be zero. Let's say six, eight, 10, 12, 16, 20, any number that is even if we divide by two, the remainder is going to be zero. Now the modulus operator. So this is that modulus sign always gives us the remainder. So that is what we are checking. So we are seeing if this variable X is taken and if we perform a modulus operation with two, and if it results in zero, obviously it is going to be even number, right? So here, what I'm going to write is document dot right in the opening and closing round brackets, the text that I'm going to write is even number. So in fact, as you can see, immediately the output is also being shown over here. Let me just put it in H1 tag. In fact, I'll do it in H3. And the reason why immediately we got even number as the output is because yes, we can see that this variable is even and that's why this if block got executed. So what if this variable was not even, let me just change it to three. So there you go. You cannot see any output now, but we also have to find out for the odd side, right? We also find need to find out whether the number is odd also. So in this case, simply I can say else. And I'm just going to copy this entire statement. I forgot to give a semicolon and here I'm going to say odd number. So now you can see we are getting the output of odd number over here. If I change this value to two again, we'll get even number. So this is the if else control statements. So either the if block is going to be executed or the else block is going to be executed depending upon what the condition is. Now note that you can always exclude else block. So we don't need to have it. So if you have only one condition to check for, that is only if you want to check for even numbers, then you can do it in if block itself, right? But if you are checking for multiple conditions, then you can have if else if and else. So that else if part we'll see in a minute, but you cannot have an else block in without if block. Okay. So that is not valid. You can see that immediately we're getting an error. Okay, so this was the first program. Now let's actually get to the second program quickly. And it's just a simple modification in the first program itself. So what the second program is saying is we need to find out whether number is positive, negative or zero. So now let's say our variable is x equals to two as of now. What we have to check in the if block, we'll say if x greater than zero, I'm going to say it is a positive number. So these are those comparison operators we've talked about in the operators video, right? So these are the comparison operators which help us in performing the comparison. Now we also have to check for negative numbers. So I'm going to say else if again, opening and closing round brackets. So this is how else if block goes. 
I'm going to say x less than 0. And inside this, I'm going to write negative. So if x value is less than 0, it's going to be negative. Let's change the value over here. I'm going to say minus 1. And you can see immediately we got the value of negative. So lastly, we also have to check for 0, right? So this is where the last else block can be used. I'm going to say number is neither positive nor negative. So if I make the x value as 0, let's see what we get. So there you go, we got the output number is neither positive nor negative. So here we had three different conditions. That's why we used three different blocks. We used if block, we used else if block, and we also used else block. So this is how you use else if block. Now you can have n number of conditions and then just the else if blocks will be increased, right? So if you want to check for one more condition, you just need to add one more else if block. So this was program number two. Let's quickly jump to program number three. That is find if a number is positive and even. So we have two conditions, but they are linked with each other with, with the AND clause, which means that we need to check a number which is positive as well as even, okay? And not just a positive number. So let's see how that goes. So let's say our number is five. So in the if block, what I can do is I can have nested if else blocks, which means first I can check whether the number is positive. So this condition checks for that, right? So if X greater than zero, which means that it is going to be a positive number, but I also need to check for even number, right? So inside this if block, I can say if x mod 2 equal equal to 0, which means that it is also an even number and I can again print even number and inside the bigger if that is this if block, this if block, I can also have else block. So this else block will be for this inner if block. Okay, so here I can say number is positive, but it is odd, correct, right? Because you can see our number is positive, but it is odd. So first I'm checking whether the number is positive or not in this larger if, since it is positive, this in internal block is executed, otherwise it would be excluded. So inside this first I'm printing positive. Yes, we have our positive number, but we are checking for the next condition, which is if x mod 2 equal equal to 0, which means is it an even number or not? If not, then the internal else block is going to be executed and it is going to say number is positive, but it is odd. Now for this outer if I can also have a else block wherein I can say number is negative. So if I had minus 5 over here, directly we would have got number is negative. So I hope you are getting how to use if else if and else control statements and you can see that we saw three different variants and three different versions of how you can use them. Now one last variation that you could have done in the last program that is question number three is instead of using nested if else we can have both conditions in the first if itself. So let me just show you how that works. So this is where we can use the logical operators and the logical operator to be used over here is and because we need to find if the number is positive and even right. So first condition is going to check for x greater than zero. We can combine an AND clause over here or AND operator. This is a logical operator which we seen in the operators video. So I'm going to say AND x mod 2 equal equal to zero. So this is that condition for even or odd and this is the condition for positive, right? So now I can say even and positive number. So in one single if statement, I'm just checking for both the conditions. So if I had the number of six or eight, you can see even and positive number got printed because it is even also and it is also positive. So both these conditions were true and that's why this if block got executed. So ultimately what this if block is looking for is a Boolean value. Okay. So if the condition or the statements that we write inside this if parentheses that is round brackets is true, only then these brackets that is the if block is going to be executed. And if this is false, then this entire block would be ignored. It will not be executed. So if I had anything else, if I say seven, you can see we are not getting this output. So this entire if block is not executed because this entire statement becomes false. Okay. So this was just a quick practical approach on if else if and else control statements and three different variations of the if else control statement program. All these programs I will link in the description. You can find the code and also some theory related to if else control statements. 
so go check out the description as well so that's it for this video guys in the next video we'll cover some other control statements and we'll see a practical approach for the switch case control statement so thanks for watching see you guys in the next video peace